So we're going to reconvene and start the afternoon session of the MAS NBC Capstone Symposium. And to get us started, we've got Chanel Robles. Chanel came to the MAS NBC program to pivot her career from education into marine science and conservation. Throughout this year, Chanel has worked towards developing skills in scientific research. The title of her presentation is Collaborative Conservation, Complementing Local Ecological Knowledge with Population Monitoring Baseline Assessment of Presence and Abundance of Eastern Pacific Green Sea Turtles Surrounding Isla Espiritu Santo, Baja California Sur, Mexico. And yes. there it is. Yeah. So, green sea turtles can be known as to be charismatic organisms. Resting on sandy floors, they are also associated with plastic pollution. And some of you may know that there was a commercial fishery of them in Baja California Sur, Mexico until the 1990s. Additionally, they're also considered a delicacy by some people and are still eaten to this day. However, this is not the whole picture when it comes to green sea turtles. One image that may be less commonly known is this one. So when I first um, was wanting to learn more about green sea turtles, this image really surprised me because I did not know that they could develop tumors. And this is due to fibropapillomatosis, or FP, which is a herpes virus and the first case recorded in Baja California Sur, Mexico, was in 2010 and was noted by researchers in health assessments in sea turtles from Baja California Sur, whom I'll be referring to as HAST. So in order to learn more about these organisms, one area that was added as a monitoring site in 2008 was Isla Espiritu Santo, which is only a 40 minute boat drive from the coast of La Paz. In this island, or around this island, two groups, Grupo Tortuguero de las Californias and Haas researchers go to conduct bi-monthly monitoring efforts. I also want to share that Isla Espiritu Santo is considered a marine priority region since it's utilized as foraging grounds by many migratory species such as green sea turtles. And because of this, and knowing that green sea turtles are endangered, um, are susceptible to anthropogenic activities and disease such as fibropapillomatosis. Any data um, that can be obtained from um, these sea turtles around this island is really important since it can help us learn more about how they're doing. And it, is, it can also serve to create a baseline assessment of them. So as I learned more about this, it led to the development of three or four research questions. First one is, the d does the number of green sea turtle sightings differ between those from Haas researchers and ecotourism guides? Are there potential untapped sites that could increase the monitoring efficiency of green sea turtles? And how has the presence and abundance of green sea turtles changed over the past 20 years at Isla Espiritu Santo? However, as previously mentioned, I have four research questions, but I will only be presenting on three of them today because the fourth one um, is currently um, undergoing more studies. And my fourth question was related to fibropapillomatosis. So in order to conduct my research and do my capstone study or project, I traveled to La Paz for five weeks or six weeks during the spring quarter where I met Haas researchers I also met Don Chui, a former fisherman, and is now leading the, uh, the bi-monthly monitoring efforts at Isla Espiritu Santo. And I also participated uh, in the monitoring of sea turtles. So once I was there, I needed to get data. And my data consisted of conducting a survey on ecotourism eco guides and boat captains. And I did this only after receiving IRB exemption and completed the surveys in Spanish. Um, and my sample uh, size was 27. I also was able to get data from Haas researchers um, it, that they were graciously um, able to share with me. And the data consisted from the dates January 2020 to 2022. So after, while I was there, I began to look at the data 
and they shared with me an, ex uh, an Excel sheet. And it consisted of 242 green sea turtles, and specifically their health status, the dates in which they were uh, monitored and their health was assessed, the morphometric data, and the locations in which they were caught around the island. So another component or some um, tools that I used in my capstone project to analyze the data was ArcGIS Pro, which is a program, it's a software that allows uh, for marine spatial analysis. And I noticed, however, that even though the researchers provided me with locations, uh, I did not have exact uh, coordinate points. So in order to do this, I used GPS waypoints phone app uh, while I was out there in the boat to get exact coordinate, uh, coordinate point locations. So after doing this, I was able to upload it to ArcGIS Pro and generate a map in where researchers were monitoring green sea turtles around Isla Espiritu Santo. And we can see that uh, there are specific point locations in where gillnets were set to assess the turtles, and also purple polygon regions where researchers surveyed the, the area um, in search for sea turtles. Another component of my project was to generate a story map. And within the story map, there is a contents bar that will lead you to specific uh, locations of my, or specific uh, items of my capstone project. So if I click here, it will lead me to answering my first research question, which is, does the number of Eastern Pacific green sea turtle sightings differ between those from HASP researchers and ecotourism guides? So if I do that, it will lead me to this site, and I can begin scrolling and see data from HASP researchers and see that there are four classes of active sites of green sea turtles, red being the most active, which represents there are more green sea turtles being able to be assessed here, such as in La Gallina and in San Gabriel. And now, if I want to look at the survey data, I just scroll down a little bit more and see that there are uh, more sightings of green sea turtles throughout the island. So just looking at these two sets of data, I can immediately see that there is a difference between uh, sightings um, of green sea turtles from ecotour guides and researchers. And one location in Sena del Gallo uh, popped up as well as being a most active site of these turtles based on uh, survey data. So now, if I want to just really look at both sets of data side by side, I can use this swipe method within the story map. And that is what I did. So just to set this a bit more clear, I looked at the data and saw that there is a difference and I was wondering why. Why is there a difference of green sea turtle sightings between ecotour guides and researchers? And one of the reasons is because these ecotour guides go out to the island almost every day, whereas the host researchers only go out twice a month. And I also continued to wonder why were there more green sea turtles being sighted around the western portion of the island? And there were three factors that came into play. The first one is biological characteristics second, physical characteristics, and the third, anthropogenic activities. So by talking with the survey participants and also doing some literature review, I, I learned that there were more mangroves, seagrasses, and reef structures in the Ensenadas and bays and where there were more green sea turtles being sighted and being assessed. Additionally, survey participants described the Ensenadas and bays as warm, call uh, warm calm, shallow waters that had sandy floors. And a lot of the survey participants said that there were, although that there, are, um, there were many anthropogenic activities happening around the island, there were more green sea turtles being sighted where there were less boats being anchored. So this um, seemed to really have an effect in where green sea turtles could be sighted the most. So now going into my second research question, I, since I did notice that there was a difference between sightings and ecotour guides um, and researchers, it led me to being able to answer my second question. Are there potential untapped sites that could increase the monitoring efficiency of green sea turtles? And to do this, again, I generated a map and overlay the two sets of data. 
the purple circles are representing data um, from the Haas researchers, and the yellow-orange circles represent the survey data I was able to get. And we can see that although there is some overlap in locations and where there are being sightings being occurring and uh, green sea turtles being assessed, there are also some places where there are no researchers going out there to uh, survey and assess green sea turtles, such as this one. And because there are maybe between 61 to 196 green sea turtles being seen there on average, the Ensenada de la Raza could be a location that could increase the monitoring efficiency of green sea turtles if researchers go out there to set the nets and assess the health of these turtles. So you may be wondering, why does this matter? Why do green sea turtles um, matter? And the reason is because they're bioindicators, which means that their presence and abundance around the island may indicate the health of the ecosystem. Additionally, it is important to monitor their population health and know if disease such as fibropapillomatosis is becoming more prevalent in the green sea turtles. And if we put these together while also integrating local ecological knowledge from ecotour guides and boat captains, it can increase monitoring efficiency and can inform conservation efforts if the species has indeed been recovering since the 1990s which then led to my third question. How has the presence and abundance of green sea turtles changed over the past 20 years at Isla Espiritu Santo? And based on anecdotal observations, more than 50% or 17 individuals from my survey said that the population had indeed increased, while less than 50% had said that they were either unsure, they had decreased, or stayed about the same. And a majority of the participants that said that they were unsure, it was because they had, um, did not feel that they went out to the island for enough time uh, to really specifically give me a precise answer or because they hadn't been living in La Paz for so long, for, for 20 years. So while I was there in La Paz, I was not only able to learn from house researchers and from the green sea turtles, but I was also able to learn from the survey participants. And I just wanted to share with you all a little bit of what I, um, of the, um, the knowledge that they shared with me. So specifically, survey participant 14 said, when referring to um, what he had been previously doing before working as an ecotour guide, he said that before we were predators, I was a fisherman, but the laws have changed. And when referring to green sea turtles and conservation, survey participant eight shared, before you would see them less. When we would see them, we brought them with us. I am grateful for conservation. Before it was rare to see them when I was a child, and now I want to return what I previously took away. So as I've been completing this capstone project, I have been uh, generating some key takeaways and the first one is that green sea turtles can be mostly observed in the western portion of Isla Espiritu Santo, and therefore my capstone project can serve as a framework for future studies of green sea turtles around the island. Second point is that continuous communication and collaboration it can increase monitoring efforts and also help us obtain more data about uh, green sea turtles around the island, while also integrating local ecologic ecological knowledge. And three, green sea turtle population based on anecdotal observations at Isla Espiritu Santo has been increasing. And I also wanted to share with you all a QR code for my story map um, that if you do want to scan it with your phone, it will lead you to um, what I was working for during these past few weeks um, and will be also providing this to researchers and ecotourism guides. So thank you all for your time. I want to thank my Capstone Advisory Committee, Heidi Batchelor, Ernest Frazier, Elena Fernandez-Sanz, and Dr. Eduardo Resendiz. I also want to thank Amy Work, IES Travel and Survey Participants, with whom I would not have been able to do this uh, research, Health Assessments in Sea Turtles from BCS, Don Chuy or Jesus Lucero from Grupo Tortuguero de las Californias, my family, friends, and the NBC program. Thank you for your time.
Oh, questions, yes. Amanda. So I know it, you mentioned in the beginning this virus and how you were um, investigating a little bit about it but didn't quite include it in the presentation, but um, I'm definitely interested in hearing more. Um, what is this disease and do you think it's becoming more prevalent or is that just something you'll have to find out? Yes, yeah, so um, I, so from what I've been reading and just read yesterday because an article did just get published yesterday, um, it's, it is becoming a bit more prevalent in some populations and there are also different strains of the virus. So there is still much to, lear to learn as to like um, how, for example, environmental factors are coming into play, uh, which is like what is currently being researched right now. Yes, Anya. Oh, um, I think. Um, I was just wondering, based on your findings, do you think that this would present an opportunity for some kind of official collaboration with the ecotourism guides and have? However, you say that. Oh, yes. Um, yes, I. I would think so. I would hope so. I. Um, so. Even though um, there is, uh, from what I understand, there is some communication between some ecotourism guides and HAST researchers, but I think it could definitely grow and um, become stronger. So I am hoping that this does um, create or foster a relationship between them and where they can communicate and collaborate towards conservation of green sea turtles. That's awesome. It seems like a really great opportunity for citizen science. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah, thank you. So we did have one person ask if you could put the QR code oh, up yes. again, Sorry. just in case they missed it. And then we have a question asking, um, did you learn anything or do you know anything from your research about habitat changes due to pollution or climate change in the area you studied? Yes. From my capstone project, I did not specifically look into the pollution or um, the climate aspect. Um, I mostly focused on the answers and data I was able to compile from the survey research. And um, like, for example, the biological physical characteristics as well as the anthropogenic activities. But um, I think that there is going to be, peop researchers are going to be looking at the pollution aspect. Uh, Great. And then there's one more question, which is, um, in what way do you feel your project helps um, move the needle on conservation of green sea turtles? Yes. So um, Dr. Resendiz, who's in my capstone committee, um, is right now uh, uh, presenting on fibropapillomatosis um, and working with CONAMP, which is the uh, Comisión Nacional de Áreas Naturales Protegidas in Mexico. So he is going to be sharing my capstone project work with CONAMP, and we'll see if we can maybe get this published or not, but we don't know yet. <laughs> and I do think um, the project information will help um, towards the conservation efforts of green sea turtles. Mm -hmm.